Good morning, champions. This is still the assembly of the God begotten. Hallelujah. He has said, and I'll you get used to this very beginning because I need you to get it. That begotten is not a word, it is a reality. The reality of our sonship, the reality of our nature, the reality of our position, the reality of our relationship with God, and to the, the reality of our nature. And today, I'm going to add the reality of our interactions with each other. This week, God has been teaching me love. You know, my week actually began with a statement. He is an opportunity to show love. And this was Father responding to me, trying to press on him that somebody needed to be disciplined. You know, women, where we have a focus, that sometimes you press and press, and no matter how often I pressed, that this person is not going to change until there's some disciplinary measures applied. He kept telling me, he is an opportunity to show love. And when later in the week, the Holy Spirit, I felt, I had in my heart, begotten of love, I naturally tried to change it. Because I felt, ah, if you're sending me to teach love, I hope you know I failed the love test earlier in the week. So, but I got to learn, I got to study, and today I'll just be sharing what I have found as is peculiar to this ministry. So say, it, say with me, I am begotten of love. I am a being of love. God wants to love people through me. Hallelujah. So turn with me using your Bible to the book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 7. I'll read it for us in my amplified version. And then I'll quickly read 1 John chapter 3 verse 16 and 18. Beloved, let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. For love is from God. And everyone who loves others is born is begotten of God and knows God. What's that place telling us quickly? Say, love is from God. Love is not something we can do naturally. It springs from God. And he who loves others, he who loves not his church members, he who loves not members of his denomination, he who loves not just members of his family, he who loves not just his children, he who loves others, who loves his fellow men, is begotten of God. Love is the single greatest revealer of your identity as a God begotten. Love is the single greatest revealer of your identity as a God begotten. The second verse says, By this we know love. That's 1 John 3 16 and 18. By this we know love. By this we define love. By this we understand what the Bible means by this love. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. My little children, that's verse 18. Let us not love in word or in tongue. Let us not love by our talk. Let us not love by our speech. But let us love indeed and in truth that's definitely not how the world defines love sacrificial selfless death so I said love is the greatest revealer of your identity as a God begotten we are begotten of love to manifest love the beautiful thing about coming to understand that we are begotten of God is that every part of everything that God is we are meant to be we cannot claim to be fathered by God if we do not love people. Our text says, let us love one another for love is of God, is a command. And everyone who loves is born of God. He knows God. So love comes from God. Your genuine love for one person, for another person is the evidence you have that you are not world begotten, that you are God begotten. The only proof that you and I can take to the world that we are God begotten we are partakers of his divine nature is that we love people appropriately even Jesus when he was living used love as an indicator 
to the disciples. He said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you do what? Love, have love for one another. So the beautiful thing about love is that it's an action word. It's a verb. You cannot express love with words. Love can only be known by the actions it prompts, the actions it elicits. So we are begotten of the God who is love. That makes us representatives of love. That means in your family, in your school, in your neighborhood, in, your, in the marketplace, in the boardroom, you are a representative of love. You are God's ambassador of love. And this love is not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It's not something you do when you feel like. It's not something you do when you don't feel like. It is your nature. You have been begotten. Your very nature is wired in love. So going back to our text, what does the Bible mean by this love? Is it you no know, when we say I love you and we say I love you too? Is that what the Bible calls love? Is that what is love for the Bible? So to love here, according to the Bible, I have to quickly look up that word, implies to esteem one another. You cannot say you love and you do not esteem the next person. To respect, to venerate, to highly respect another person. That includes your gate man. That includes your laundry man. That includes your cook. That includes the staff at the office to serve with faithfulness to be faithful to serving somebody so in 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 faithfully serving your master you are loving in faithfully serving your mistress you are loving in faithfully serving your spouse you are loving to love here when the bible says love here means to regard one another with favor with goodwill with benevolence not to ch you choose to show favor to somebody you choose to show to be kind to be good to somebody this for me applies specifically do you realize the bible says we should love our enemies ah love your enemies it's not endorsing that somebody hates you but it's, it's putting a decision in you it's putting a command on your nature because he knows you in your nature you are his representative when the rain falls look up it's falling on every roof it's not falling on my roof because god god thinks i was good last night and it's not falling on mrs akamba's roof or puff's roof because god feels oh you did not do what i asked you not to do it's on everybody's roof we are we are begotten of the god who is that love so we are meant to love in that order not according to feelings that is why i i had to summarize because this whole thing is so vast that you don't even know which one do you come to share I had to summarize and say this love is death this love is death 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 to yourself to wanting everything your way death death to your flesh death just a moment this love is dead dead to yourself to wanting everything your way dead to lust to wanting everything for yourself death to pride to wanting to appear important if god has ever sent you back to tell your house girl i'm sorry you will understand that you die a billion times before you that sorry leaves your mouth because you try to justify it she was right i was right she was wrong you know but then when you go back to kneel down it says go and apologize you were wrong so this love is death this love is wisdom the call to love our enemies is not a call to be foolish it's a decision love this love it's a decision it's putting it's putting demand on your nature so that's why i said part of the meaning the nuances of the agape used in that place is choosing to show goodwill choosing to give favor to somebody that you don't feel like being good to you don't feel like showing favor to but you are obeying god that is love so this love is death death, death to yourself death to your flesh death to your lust as you don't want your way you don't want everything for yourself and you are no more interested in appearing important and this this love is is governed by wisdom it's not foolish love wisdom tells you how to love your enemy and how to love your neighbor these are two different people with one command love them wisdom does that today's text is god calling us back 
to live out of who live from the center of who we are to live out of our nature it's not a text it's not something to for us to go back it's, it's not a healing text today in that direction it's healing for our emotions where you know that you have capacity finitely to love as god does infinitely you have capacity you've been begotten in love we are the god begotten and we've been commanded to lay down our lives for our brethren not in word or in tongue but in deed and in truth i will conclude with an excerpt of jesus's speech because the entire bible especially romans matthew and first john first second third john is literally governed by what the bible means practical application of what god means when he says you and i should love other people not just members of our family jesus said this to the disciples in matthew 5 i read from my favorite version message you're familiar with the old written law love your friend and its unwritten companion hates your enemy i'm challenging that and i'm telling you to love your enemies so if you have made a list of the enemies that should die by the end of this month of the year, of this year turn the list to the these are the people these are the people i have to pray for that god changes them you pray for them and let god decide whether he's going to answer with death or with life love your love i'm telling you to love your enemies let them bring out the best in you not the worst when someone gives you a hard time respond with the energies of prayer for then you are walking out of your true selves your god created selves when you love when you choose to pay good for evil you allow the god part of you to win as we progress in this begotten series we will come to the series that has to do that you are begotten of the one who is god and what does that mean you are a god man you are a man who is god that's the part that i'm super excited about but we need to lay these foundations so now when when you allow love to win in every single time at every single point that hate would have won you allow the god to rule over the man because you are a god man well, when we come to there we'll understand so this is actually what god does he gives his best the sun to warm and the rain to nourish to everyone regardless the good and bad the nice and nasty if all you do is love the lovable do you expect a bonus anyone can do that if you simply say hello to those who greet you do you expect a medal any run of the meal sinner can do that in a word what am i saying this was jesus speaking i'm just reading it back to you grow up you are kingdom subject so love actually actually points to our maturity in god saying grow up you are kingdom subject you are god begotten you are begotten of love live like it live out of your god created identity live generously and graciously towards people that is the way god lives towards you please let's rise together as we affirm the word today today's word i will ask that you download it take it back because everything I would have said as to what God means about us loving one another, I've put them as our affirmations. Let them not just be words you say and go. Let them be words you take and keep as a mirror. And do what the Bible says that we constantly gaze at the word and we are transformed from glory to glory. Say it with me. I am begotten in love. I am a being of love. I am called to walk in love. I embrace everything that is good and virtuous. Daily, the Holy Spirit helps me to live out my God created identity. I am divinely enabled to love myself, my neighbors and even my enemies i am inventive in hospitality always ready to lend a hand i live generously and graciously towards everyone i am begotten of the one who is love 
I am equipped to live a lover's life. Circumspect and exemplary. I am numbered among those called out to love. By the help of God, I cannot only love much but well. My life is making Jesus attractive to all. It is drawing praise and glory from the lips of all men to God. I am begotten of God. I am a citizen of Zion. I cannot be defined by the culture of this place. Though I am in the world, I am not of the world. My affections are not centered on the things of this world. I live by a different set of rules. Christ Jesus is a model and pattern for me. I am God begotten. I am an ambassador of the culture of heaven. I am redeemed from every culture of lovelessness. I am redeemed from every tribal egocentric tendencies. I am redeemed from speaking the languages of greed and hatred. I am delivered from living a self-centered life. I am not in love with the world. The love of the Father is in me. I have overcome greed. I have conquered selfishness. I am victorious over wicked tendencies. I prevail over negative behaviors. I am not plagued by the culture of my human ancestry. Glorious things are said of me everywhere I go. My life draws men to God. As Christ is, so am I in this world. Amen. Open your mouth and thank God for begetting you in love. So thank you, Jesus, for giving me your nature, for making me a partaker of your divine nature. Thank you, Jesus, for the grace to love as you do. Thank you, Jesus, to live out of my nature. And then open your mouth and say, Lord, awaken me in love. Lord, awaken me to love. Help me to love like you do. Help me to see like you do. Help me to hear like you do. Help me to think like you do. Help me to know like you know. Help me to hear like you hear. The Lord, awaken me to love like you do. 